Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel and today I'm going to discuss about a system setup of Python inside your machine. There are so many online interpreter or compilers which is available in a market which you can use and you can start writing a code. But if you would like to do some sort of a full scale application development at some point of a time you have to do all of these system setup inside your machine inside your dev environment and this is what i am going to showcase in this particular video if you are going to face any kind of issue because see everyone's system is different and you may get some sort of a different issue which others are not facing for some of us it is going to be smooth for some of us it is going to be a little bit difficult so if you are going to face any kind of issue feel free to write your issues inside a commit box so that we all will try to solve your issue. We all will try to learn something from your issues. And here, let's try to see whether I'm going to get some sort of issues or not. So I'm going to show you this entire setup, entire installation with respect to a VS Code. Even I'm going to show you how to do a Jupyter Notebook setup, which is pretty much popular and a lethal tool for any beginner in python just for a beginner again i'm not saying that for a full scale application development just for a beginner jupyter notebook is pretty much obvious and we all try to start from that particular point of a time so i'm going to show you each and everything step by step so let's jump in without wasting our time so here you have to go to google first of all and try to search for vs code download once you are going to search for vs code download click on this link this link is already given inside your descriptions as well so you don't have to click just go inside a description you will be able to find out this particular link if i'm using a windows machine which i am as of now so if i'm using a windows machine click over here otherwise if you're using a linux machine click over here if you're using a mac machine click over here so once you are going to click it is going to take a fraction of second of time depends upon your internet speed so file size is not very big it's just 90 mb of file that you are downloading as of now so you will end up downloading this particular file so i'll just go to my download folder here right and i believe you all are able to see i have downloaded multiple times because i was just preparing for this particular lecture so here you will be able to find out that it's been downloaded so just click over here click 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 and it's done and you will be able to install a vs code inside your machine it's not at all difficult so just keep on clicking on this particular one if you are facing any issue you know where you have to put up all of your issues then you can try to search for a vs code visual studio code now what is this visual studio code it's nothing but it's a ide ide integrated development environment so where you can write every kind of a code back end front end then you can try to push inside your repository maybe you can try to even productionize it but yes your development is going to start from here now apart from visual studio code there are some other ides which is available in a market one of the best i would say is pycharm but again that depends upon a developer to developer so personally i like vs code so maybe you are going to like these things as well so here my visual studio code is available i'll just click over here and here is my visual studio code right this is how it is going to looks alike it is going to give you some sort of pop up as of now just try to avoid it now my vs code is ready now what i have to do is I have to do a Python installation because if I have to write a code in Python, in C++, C, Java or in any other languages, so first of all I have to install an interpreter. Unless and until interpreters are not available, you will not be able to execute any sort of a code inside a VS Code. VS Code is just a kind of a application where you can write a code but to execute a code even now i can write a code there is no issue at all but at the time when I'm, by the time i'm going to execute it it is going to give me an issue i'll show you that so here i can go to file i can try to create one particular folder and then maybe i can try to start coding 
let's see whether I'm able to do it or not. So maybe I can go inside a document folder, click and then I can try to create a Python folder over here. And let's try to create a file inside this one, inside a Python folder. So I've just created one file, one folder. Inside that, maybe I can try to create one Python file called as test.py file. Now if I'm going to write a code, so print, this is my first, first Python code, right? And now if I'll try to execute it, it is giving me some sort of an issue. Let's suppose I'm going to close it and then I'll try to execute this one. It is giving me an issue as you can see. The reason is very simple. There is nothing called as Python which is available inside my machine. And because of it, it is not able to even recognize the extension of this .py file, right? As of now, there is nothing which is available in my machine and that is a problem. It is not able to identify it. Now, how to do a Python setup? Because Visual Studio Code setup was pretty much easy. Now to install a Python, inside your machine what you have to do is you have to go to this particular link right so just go to this particular link so i'm just showing you this link for a windows you can try to even find out a link for a mac machine because this is an official website which i'm trying to showcase and here you can just click and then you will be able to find out for a linux system for even a mac system but as of now i'm using a windows machine so first of all download python again you are downloading a latest version of python if you are interested in the oldest version you can even download an old version of python many people does that because let's suppose if you will start contributing in a project where we have a older version of python so in that case obviously you need older version of python because other people have already done a coding in older version of python so you can do that as well. But if you are fresher, if you are doing it for the very first time, you can go ahead with a latest release. There is no issue at all. No issue means no issue at all. So here you can just go and you can try to download this Python and then you can try to install this Python. Again, click, click, click and you will be able to install. I have already installed it, right? So once your installation is done, I'm just trying to reinstall again, that, that's completely fine, right? So just try to install this Python. Uh, it is going to take some time, so that's completely fine. Okay, so installation setup was successful and close it. So Python installation is done. Now. I'll just try to, just, just for the security purpose. So I'll just try to close a VS code. I'll try to restart my VS code once again so that all the changes will be available. Even now, right? Even now, you will not be able to find out an executor. So I'm not able to execute it even now, right? So what I will do is I'll just go over here. There is a tab called as extension tab right there's a tab called as extension tab and here i can try to search for python extension inside a vs code so you have already installed a python libraries or python binaries or python interpreter inside a vs code what you have to do is you have to install a python extension so here what i will do is i'll just try to search for python python extension by default it was showing me but yes i can try to click over here and then click on install. Once you are going to click on install, it will be able to install in a fraction of a second. It will not take much time and it will be able to install an extension. It was even giving me a recommendation for an installation. It's completely fine. Now you will be able to see some sort of a changes over here. See, so I have already installed and here now I'm able to get a run button right? Run Python file. So now it is able to understand, it is able to understand that, okay, fine. So there is a, something called as Python, which is available. Click over here. And this is my first Python code. I'm able to see it, right? I'm able to get a result. Now I can start writing a Python code as much as I can. And I will be able to execute piece by piece Python code inside my machine. 
Now, this is one of the way by creating a Python file. I can create maybe a test1.py file. It's completely fine. I can write a code over here. I can try to create any number of file, any number of folder, and I will be able to execute a Python code in each and every file system. So VS code and then Python installation is done. Python is available inside my machine. I have already installed an extension. I have already installed the executable interpreter. <clears throat> now, what is next? So the next one is, what I can do is like, uh, I can try to install a Jupyter notebook. See, so you can do a coding even in this way, but as a beginner, I need some sort of a simple tool where I can do a coding even in an easiest possible way. And this is where Jupyter Notebook comes under a picture. And Jupyter Notebook is having an extension called as IPYNB, IPython Kernel Notebooks. So here, what I can do is, so maybe I can try to create one file, maybe test, test2, dot ipynb so ipynb is nothing but ipython jupyter notebook so that is something which it is called so i can try to maybe create a jupyter notebook inside this one itself that, that's completely fine and i can try to do maybe one plus one over here and then try to execute but here by the time you are going to execute it it is giving me a suggestion that install or enable suggested extension python plus jupyter so here ipynb file it will be able to create this is a jupyter notebook file which it is able to create right but apart from this i have to do a, some sort of a installation so i have to click over here and then it will try to install an extension of a jupyter notebook if you are and then obviously i have to select a python environment so what is a python environment so maybe i can try to use this one or maybe this one both of these things is fine because these are the two python environment which is available to me so maybe i can try to choose a 3.12 that's completely fine so it is going to take an effect and it is going to install the extension along with your python environment everything happens automatically you don't have to worry about anything right this is pretty much easy believe me guys this is very very easy to do a python setup and i can try to write maybe a code in .py file or maybe into a ipy file as you can see right execute or maybe i can try to click over here i can try to execute maybe i can try to write something over here i can try to write my name s u d h n s h u k u k u m a r and it is going to work fine for me right so I can try to do a Jupyter Notebook setup. I can try to do even a .py setup. Both is completely fine. Even I can go over here and then I can try to search Jupyter. J-U-P-Y-T-E-R. Jupyter inside an extension tab. I have already installed it. Right. If I'm going to click, it's already installed. Now it is asking for uninstallation. Means it's already installed inside my system. Simple. Okay. Fine. So this is how you all will be able to do a complete Python setup inside your machine. So now your machine is ready. And from a next video, we can start learning Python in detail in very, very depth. But before that, just make sure that you have this particular setup inside your machine. And if you are facing any kind of a issue, right, any kind of a issue, please feel free to reach out to me or to every one of us inside a comment box, we will try to help you out with our best. And all of these links are already available inside your description. So please check out our descriptions and try to get a help even from there. With that, thank you so much everyone. See you again in my next lecture.